My dad, he's the backbone, but since my brother grew up, so he's a typical Punjabi Jat who worked hard in the fields and has always been strong. They've been through so much in India. They came here with nothing. They started from scratch. I can never, never applaud for all of our, actually all of our parents. They, we will require a lot of it. I have never seen my brother down. I've never seen him without smiling. It's going to take a lot when we see him not speak back, not to get up and say, brother, don't worry. We'll figure out a way together. Wahegur Ji ka khalsa, Wahegur Ji ki fateh. Pello be sare anda tanwad karda to see. Actually, I'll, I'll speak in English since uh, most of the communities are here. Thank you everybody for coming, uh, showing up to these events. Uh, I can tell you firsthand, these have been comforting to the heart. Myself, along with my family, I've seen their sorrows turn into some hope every time they see the community come together, every time they hear the word hero or their son. I can see some light in their eyes where before, when I first met them, I only saw despair and tears. But I now I see a lot of light. I see some hope going forward that this family can survive. Even with my beautiful brother gone, my support system gone, this place brings back a lot of memories. We grew up here. I went to Logan High School right there. Sometime I used to run away from school through this way. But, and I see Union City Police here. Uh, I would like to share, I actually was involved in an explorer program. And when I moved away from the States, my brother was the one who was always telling me, come back to your city and get involved. I don't care what you do, get involved and figure out a way where you can add value to the others. He would always tell me, you're very compassionate as well. You're a helpful person but you're not using it. There's no point to living your life if you're earning money outside, if you're not able to find a way to give back to the community that you lived in, that you grew up in. And I wish it was my choice to come back and be with my brother to move forward, but now I'm forced to come back to this community. But what I wanna say is you guys will see me a lot more. You guys, I will figure out ways to honor my brother in his memory, to help out as many people as I can in my life. Whatever life I have, it will be dedicated to even be 10% of my who my brother was. Uh, I've been hearing stories from his co-workers today. When we used to go play together, I was in a car with him, he always used to be on call with his co-workers. It'll be call about something random, hey, let's invest in something, let's buy a house somewhere, it will always be about something, but today actually hearing from them, I know how much love they shared. And I used to tell them, you know, why do you waste so much time? Let's go somewhere else. But now I know why, because they had so much love. As much as he loved me, he loved his colleagues the same, if not more. And I can see that love from them for my brother as well. And it's really comforting. Uh, to have them come at home, share their stories uh, with my family. My dad, he's the backbone, but since my brother grew up, so he's a typical Punjabi Jat who worked hard in the fields and has always been strong. They've been through so much in India. They came here with nothing. They started from scratch. I can never, never applaud for all of our, actually all of our parents. They, go, they went through so much to be successful in this country, but since my brother grew up, he took a back seat because my brother was the provider, my brother was the support for the family, he was the next person. And I could never imagine myself because I never, I never thought my brother would ever go away. Whatever I needed, whenever I needed, whoever actually needed any help, uh, he was the first call, he was the first person that he'll take care of it, no worries. He'll figure out a way to do something so I don't have to worry. I want to give time to his co-workers because of all the stories that shared, it soothes the heart and I would like his children in the future to hear firsthand, not just from his family who loved him a lot, but from other people too who were in his life but were just as important as his own blood family. 
and I want to give them time to speak as well. And at last, what I want to say is, thank you all for coming. I don't want to ever, ever attend these events for anyone else in the future. And I hope as a community, we all come together, figure out ways, use our knowledge, collective knowledge together. I know we have very brave souls, brilliant minds, some very, a lot of people with a lot of empathy towards society, towards their well-being of the others. So I just want to say, let's, let's not for, go home and forget about this. I want to dedicate my life to my brother, his sacrifices, his good nature, and even be 10% of helpful, his helpfulness that he was, even if I can live up to 10% of that, I would feel successful in life. And what I want to ask for all of you is, stick together, please figure out a way so we can avoid these in future and show, come up with a solution so we don't have to gather for these events and rather we, we come together and celebrate every two years, five years that we have not had these incidents to come to. That as a community, we can celebrate the success that we were able to achieve together and celebrate each other. And with that, I just wanna say, you know, Thank you all for coming, for being there for my family, being there as a community, for all the other eight families as well. Nobody's going to be able to fill, those, fill that pain, fill that gap for, for the lives that we lost, because there's just no way. Person especially that you can rely on so much, you, nobody can fill that gap, nobody can live up to that. But we will all keep trying and it's your support that gave some hope to this family. We will require a lot of it. I have never seen my brother down. I've never seen him without smiling. It's going to take a lot when we see him not speak back, not to get up and say, brother, don't worry. We'll figure out a way together. So thank you all. Please be there with, for us. Please keep praying for my family, for all the other eight families as well. Thank you. Thank you all very much. Wahiguru Ji ka khalsa, Wahiguru Ji ki fateh. We have two extremes today in this country. There are those who are in favor of defunding the police. And there are those who are in favor of everyone carrying a gun. That is not going to bring us any, any closer. The vast majority of this country is in the middle. Let us have some comprehensive gun control, background checks. I'm proud our congressman, Congressman Eric Swalwell, has been leading in this effort for a long time. We hope from the grassroots, from our elected officials here, that we continue putting pressure on those in Congress to bring about comprehensive gun control so that we don't have to come back to these candlelight vigils is very painful and we just don't see any progress. Good morning everyone. My name is Karan, niece of Tapte Deep Singh or how I like to call him Tapte Chachu. There's not enough words to describe him. I've known him my whole life from when he hugged me as a baby in his arms to recently having a conversation about my dreams after graduating college. There are lifelong memories I shared with him and not enough time to share, the, share them with all of you. The things I remember most about him was his greetings, the way he used to meet me. Every family function, every gathering, every get together, he would always be the first ones to approach me and approach me with the warmest smile that would literally warm anybody's hearts. Literally rays of sunshine. And he would always say, Kidda pota, kidda karun, like in the most loving way. And he would give us the, give me the most loving and most warm hugs. And there's one thing that I distinctly remember about his greetings. He would put his hand on my head as a way of blessing me. And that was just everything. Another thing I remember him was his compliments how he was such a nice person 
and his optimism. Every time I would, he would always be complimenting me. He would always have the nicest things to say to me, like, oh, got in your dress, uh, you're, you look so beautiful today, or you did this very nicely. He would always have the nicest things to say to everybody, and if he didn't, he wouldn't say anything at all. He was always pushing me to pursue my careers, and the biggest thing about him was his laugh. He had the funniest laugh. You could hear, his laugh was just so distinctive that everybody else would be laughing, but his laugh would be like so funny and weird and loudest that you could hear him from like miles away. He had the funniest laugh. I loved his laugh. And another thing is that our shared love for Pangra. He was my Pangra partner since day one. We both loved Pangra. It was because of him I fell in love with dancing. He was not just my dad's cousin, he was like his real brother. Looking at him, seeing him would remind me of just another father figure and that he was not just my uncle, but also my father. And that's someone I can call upon whenever needing advice or help, just like I would my own dad. I was very spoiled, I was a very spoiled child and a brat, as others would say. And there were very few people that I was actually fond of. And one particular recent memory I had of him was when he asked me if I still remember when I was a, when I was little and I used to call him my favorite chacha. And I replied, of course I did, because you still are. And I still remember that proud smile he gave me after hearing that. He was a hero, risking his own life, putting his own life on the line in order to save others, to help them to safety without caring about himself. And I am not surprised, because this is the kind of person he was, a kind and loving spirit. Helping others and putting them before himself was in his nature, his soul. Those people were able to escape and return home to their families today because of him. If only he were selfish enough to save himself too, then he would be with us today. He would be with his family, my Harman Chachi and my little baby cousins, Jodh Srup and Sahib. God gives his toughest battles to his strongest soldiers. And today, after his heroism and bravery, Guru Sahib called his beloved soldier back home today. Today, Sach Khand received one of their bravest angels. There is a verse I would like to say from our Guru Granth Sahib describing Surme like him. Janam Marna, Janam Jamna Marna Hukam Hai Pane Aave Jai. So here I say he was a true Sikh, a true human, a true hero. He is not a victim, but how my community and my family would see him, a Shaheed giving his life in service and protection of others, following the true teachings of Sikhi. He might have been proud to be my favorite Chacha Ji, but standing here today, it is I who am proud to have been his niece, my beloved uncle, my Tapte Chachu, my hero. Thank you. I'm Parinaz, Tapte's niece. Um, I used to call him Tapte's mama. He was a great man. He was one of the most hardworking, caring, and humble person I've ever known. I looked up to him, and I still do, despite the fact that he doesn't walk on the same earth as us anymore. The fact he had to leave so soon still hurts, but God must have had a reason for that that we still don't understand. I always knew this day would eventually come, but I didn't know that it would be so soon. It's comforting to know that he's watching me in from heaven right now, probably talking to my great-grandmother, who had also passed away in 2016. Tapte's Baji was my cousin brother, but he, but he always treated me like his younger sister. Baji was the happiest and kindest person I knew. There was never a dull moment with you around. You always kept everyone happy and positive. I can't forget how excited you were to come visit us this summer. I'll always be waiting, Baji. Always. You were. We were all supposed to grow together, travel together, complete our dream of buying land and building houses around so we could always live together. It will always be, it will never be the same without you, Baji. A part of us is lost forever. 
the foundest, foundest memory with you is when we went to our cousin's reception party. My chinni was not ready and everybody was too busy getting ready themselves and, I, and they couldn't take me. Gopaji being my older brother, he happily went with me. You drove me all the way to the store and went store to store looking for the best chinni for me.